Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about puriparium. We all know that puriparium is a time period which starts immediately after delivery till to the six weeks post delivery. Okay. So it's a time period which starts immediately after delivery and extends till to the six weeks. So this time period is known as a puriparium and during this puriparium, okay, during this puriparium, a female is going to be immunocompromised. Okay. If I am saying that because during this puerperial states, a female will be more likely to catch up on the infections, right? Because she is immunocompromised and puerperium was divided into immediate puerperium, early puerperium and late puerperium. Immediate puerperium means first 24 hours after delivery. First 24 hours after delivery is known as immediate puerperium. From 24 hours, okay, from 24 hours to the one week, okay, from 24 hours to one week is known as the time period is known as early puerperium and from one week to six weeks that time period is known as late puerperium. Now let's see some important changes which happens in the genital organs during this puerperium. Now what are the changes which will seen with the which are seen with the uterus? Immediately after delivery what is the weight of the uterus? The weight of the uterus will be one kilogram that is thousand grams okay the thousand grams will be seen okay well and good. Now, the uterus become pelvic organ by actually the involution of uterus will be happening, right? Okay, the weight of the uterus decreases and the height of the uterus will decrease. So, uterus becomes a pelvic organ by 10 to 14 days after delivery. Yes, that's a previously asked MCQ. Level of the uterus immediately after the delivery. Okay, what is the fundal height? which is seen immediately after delivery. The fundal height will be lying at the level of umbilicus. Okay. So the uterine height will be somewhere near the umbilicus or little below to the umbilicus, which usually corresponds to the size, uh, size of a 22 weeks of period of a gestation. Okay. What is the best time to perform the puerperal sterilization? See, actually after delivering the baby, okay, delivering the baby, you can in the in the time period of puerperium you can do the sterilization in the female okay you can do the sterilization processes in the female for that what is the best period what is the best period so the best period for puerperial sterilization is two to three days after delivery okay two to three days after delivery that's the best time to go with the sterilization but up to maximum time up to when you can go with the like you know puerperial sterilization you can do it like you know till 7 to 10 days after 10 days like you know you can't like you know you are you are not able to do that okay first two to three days good for puerperial sterilization but maximum you can do this puerperial sterilization up till 7 to 10 days okay now uterus after one week actually what happens to the weight of the uterus the weight of the uterus is getting decreased right after one week the weight of the uterus will be somewhere around 500 grams Okay, two weeks after delivery, the weight of the uterus will be 300 grams and three to five weeks after delivery, it will be 100 grams. But by sixth week, sixth week means ending of the puerperium. Okay, by the end of the sixth week, the uterine weight will be just like a normal female. Okay, that is 70 to 80 grams will be seen. Okay, well and good. Now, the weight of the uterus decreases, there is no doubt. Also, the height of the uterus decrease. So, what is the rate with which the height of the uterus comes down? What is the rate? So, for that before, let's see some normal points. After delivery, after delivery, see the uterus, the fundal height, it is lying 13 centimeters above to the pubic symphysis. Okay. The uterus is lying, the fundal height, the fundus is lying 13 centimeters above to the pubic symphysis. It stays there for the next 48 hours after delivery. Okay, it's going to stay there for the next 48 hours after delivery. But after 48 hours, it gradually decreases. So, it gradually decreases 1.25 to 1.5 centimeters per day. Okay, it's going to come down 1.25 to 1.5 centimeters every day. Okay, that is the rate of involution. See, if the rate of involution is less than the is less than the normal values means that is known as sub involution sub involution means the rate of involution is not happening according to normal value normal will be 1.25 to 1.5 
if the rate of involution is less then it is known as a sub involution an important point is see what are the most common cause of sub involution one what is the management the most common cause of sub involution is like you know retained products of a conception some products got retained inside the uterus so that's the reason why involution is not happening and what is the management management is dilation and curettage okay take out the products of conception by doing dilatation and curettage okay you have to take out the products now after saying this let's talk a few important points about lochia okay see first of all uh, why there is lochia lochia means like you know after delivery a female will be having a vaginal discharge that's what is known as a lochia important point is that what exactly is this lochia and why this lochia is happening see during pregnancy there is this one important hormone is present what is that hormone progesterone is present and that progesterone is maintaining the residua so after delivering the baby you are taking out the placenta you are delivering the placenta so once placenta is gone the source the main source for progesterone is gone okay during pregnancy the main source for the progesterone is placenta so once you have delivered the placenta the main source for the progesterone in this female body is gone so what happens do you think that this like you know decidua is going to have its support no no progesterone now this decidua can't be maintained so please concentrate delivery of placenta causes a decrease progesterone yes true now whenever the progesterone are coming down that causes loss of support to decidua so decidua can't stay there so what happens there will be shedding of decidua and this shedding is known as lochia okay now this lochia this uh, like you know this discharge will be of different different colors for the first 3 days this discharge is known as lochia rubra okay that discharge is mainly like you know red in color because the main content of this discharge is blood okay decidua is falling out decidua is coming out along with the blood this is the decidua sorry this is the lochia rubra now lochia cirrhosa means like you know it will be seen 4 to 10 days mostly mucus is coming out okay the discharge contain mainly the mucus it is yellow in color lochia cirrhosa yellow in color now lochia alba means alba means white in color okay the discharge is coming white in color so after 10 days the lochia will be lochia alba and you are going to have mostly epithelial cells in the discharge okay so we have discussed about the lochia now after this let's talk about purperal pyrexia in the purperium in the first 10 days okay in the purperium if for the first 10 days if she manifest fever then that is known as a purperal pyrexia now please concentrate temperature more than 38 degrees centigrade or more than 100.4 degrees fahrenheit on two occasions okay on two occasions in the first like you know in the in the first 10 days okay two occasions in first okay, i should write something like on two occasions 24 hours apart okay 24 hours apart so 24 hours apart you are taking the like you know the readings and every time the temperature is more than 38 degrees centigrade so that is a purperal pyrexia let's see what is the most common cause the most common cause of this purperal pyrexia is purperal sepsis okay purperal sepsis now there is some infection is happening okay some infection is happening in the body where exactly in the endometrium in the endometrium see the most common cause is going to be the most common organism causing this infection is group a like you know streptococcus okay group a beta hemolytic streptococcus and that causes that causes endometritis okay because of this inflammation there is a fever okay now what is the most common like you know a uh, mode of delivery associated with the purperal sepsis see purperal sepsis is seen with the cesarean section most of the students will think like you know with normal vaginal delivery uh, there will be a chance of purperal sepsis that causes purperal pyrexia no it's a c section which can predispose to purperal sepsis now what to do now as a treatment as a treatment we can give clindamycin okay with gentamicin clindamycin with gentamicin can be given as a part of treatment see remember one important point is late onset endometritis late onset endometritis the most common cause is going to be chlamydia okay see the most common cause for the endometritis in the post like you know purperal female now 
most common cause of endometritis is going to be group A beta hemolytic streptococci. But late onset endometritis, the organism that's going to cause is the chlamydia. So the drug of choice which we are going to use is actually a treatment of choice is clindamycin with gentamicin, two combination drugs. Okay. After this, let's talk about puerperal psychiatric disorders. Okay, puerperal psychiatric disorders. Like you know, the psyche of the female is going to change a bit. Now, let's see postpartum blues. Postpartum blues, and these postpartum blues will be seen almost in 50 to 60 percent of the female. What exactly are these postpartum blues? See, after delivery, suddenly the progesterones are going to come down. So because of the because of the decrease in progesterones, because of the hormonal abnormalities there can be this kind of a psychological abnormalities okay so postpartum blues are going to be seen for the first few days these are very milder they will resolve on their own actually so seen for the first few days a female is going to be irritable she is going to be highly anxious mild mood swings will be there she is going to be insomniac she is going to have like you know teary eyes like you know she is like you know very much tearful so what exactly i am trying to put into your mind for the first few days, a female can experience postpartum blues. She is having anxiety. She is having irritable state. Like, you know, mild, like, you know, mood swings. Sometimes, like, you know, she is happy by seeing a baby. Now, suddenly, her mood is getting changed. So, the mild mood swings are seen. So, this postpartum blues actually resolves on their own. Okay. Now, let's talk about the postpartum depression, which will be seen in 10 to 16% of the females. Okay. Now, it will be seen... Uh, like you know in uh, three to six months within three to six months now what will happen here see this postpartum depression is more severe when compared to postpartum blues now the female is having a decreased bonding with the baby now a female is not lactating her baby okay now see now she is having excessive guilt she will feel like you know i'm not a good mother like you know i am not taking care of this baby properly i'm not a good like you know wife she is having a lot of problem issues with herself okay she's everything all right okay she is good in every aspect but she is feeling herself that she is not a good mother she is not a good uh, parent she is not a good wife something kind of that okay she is having excessive guilt and with that guilt she is having a decrease bonding with the baby she is not lactating the baby now she will be having sometimes suicidal thoughts and she can sometimes also harm the baby infanticide can happen so these are the things which are seen because of postpartum depression Okay, and this needs a treatment. Okay, anti like you know, antidepressants like you know should be given, like SSRI should be given. That you will study anyway in the psychiatry. Now, what about the postpartum psychosis? Less than one percent of the females will experience the postpartum psychosis. Now, in the postpartum psychosis, this is more severe. Actually, this will be seen in the first one to three months. And this postpartum psychosis is like characterized by delusions and hallucination. If you see this word, delusions and hallucinations, which are mainly centered around the baby. Okay. So this is postpartum psychosis. Along with that, a female can have insomnia, anxiousness, like, you know, rapid mood swings. All these are also can be seen with the postpartum psychosis. Important words are postpartum psychosis, hallucinations, delusions, postpartum depression, Suicidal thoughts will be coming, infanticide, excessive guilt will be there. All they are, all they are like, you know, seen with the depression. But with postpartum blues, everything is actually all right. She is just mildly irritable, mild mood swings are there. She is having like, you know, she is crying. These things will be seen with the postpartum blues. Okay. All important points about the pure perium are completed. Hope the video is helpful. Thank you.